Hello everyone, how are you today? I'm Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Today I'm going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. This topic has been requested by a lot of subscribers and they want to know and that's why I'll be explaining everything there is to know about this disease today. So let's start. If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. So guys, we, we have already discussed arthritis in general in a previous video, which was in Hindi. And you can watch that on my channel. But that was general arthritis. See, there are more than 100 types of arthritis. And rheumatoid arthritis is one of the types and although all the arthritis can present with similar symptoms the reason can be different so that's what we are going to talk about today how rheumatoid arthritis is different from other types of arthritis and what you need to know about it and how you can tackle it what causes it how you can diagnose it how it is treated how you do and most importantly how do you live with it First of all, let me tell you the difference between an infection and an inflammation. See, wherever your body, whenever any part of your body is entered by a foreign organism, that is an infection where there is a foreign organism, a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, a parasite, anything. But because of this infection, what your body does is attacks the area wherever that foreign microorganism is entering. So that area swells up, that area becomes red because of all these fightings, these attacks by our body's defense system. This process of attacking the area, this, this redness, this swelling, this pain is all called inflammation. This is a side effect of war between between the infecting microorganism and your defense mechanisms. So I hope you got the difference between infection and inflammation. Now in any arthritis, any arthritis, this same thing, this inflammation happens in your joints. That means there will be destruction, swelling, redness, pain in your joints because of the same thing your own defense cells, your own defense mechanisms. But there is no infective agent there. Most of the times there is a type called infective arthritis where there will be an infective agent. But in rheumatoid arthritis, in osteoarthritis, there is no infective agent. So this is an inflammation of your joints and the surrounding tissues. So in rheumatoid arthritis there will be a significant involvement of the surrounding tissues of the joint that is classical so there will be pain swelling there can be stiffness of the joint and because of all these things obviously you won't be able to work that joint so there will be loss of function loss of function of that joint the most commonly involved joints in rheumatoid arthritis are the wrist and the fingers and women are more commonly involved in rheumatoid arthritis than men. It often starts in the middle age, but it's more commonly found in old people. You might have the disease for only a short time also, but sometimes it might come and go, come and go. And severe cases can actually last for a lifetime. So rheumatoid arthritis is different from other arthritis. And the most common type of arthritis, which is osteoarthritis, which is because of older age, is different from rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis can also affect other parts of your body besides your joint. It can, it can affect your eyes, your mouth, your lungs. What causes this problem? What is the reason? Quite frankly, it's unknown. It's not yet pinpointable. It's not pinpointable that okay, this is causing, that is causing. But yes, sometimes we blame infections, other infections in the body producing that kind of inflammation reaction in some other part of the body. 
then genes, genetics and hormonal changes. So these three things can be linked to the disease and smoking, smoking and bad lifestyle is also linked to the disease and you will have a stronger and more severe disease. If you have a bad lifestyle, you will have a severe disease and more it will last longer. Now, if you compare this with osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis which happens as your age is because of the wear and tear which happens because of use of that joint. Now, let's talk about the symptoms. Mo symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Most of the time, rheumatoid arthritis affects the joints of both sides of your body equally. The fingers, the wrist, the knee, elbow, feet, ankles, hip, shoulders, all these joints are commonly affected. The disease often begins slowly and it's difficult to diagnose. It's difficult to diagnose in the early stages. But early symptoms can include minor joint pains, minor stiffness, stiffness of joints, fatigue, joint fatigue and sometimes there can be joint symptoms like morning stiffness which lasts more than an hour. Okay, if you have stiffness in the joints in the morning lasting for more than an hour, you should be alarmed. Then joints can feel warm, it might be tender when you press or touch. It can be stiff when you are not using them for more than an hour. That means if you don't use the joint, they become stiff. If you keep the joints mobile, moving them, doing something, sometimes they don't get stiff. So that is one best approach in that kind of a case. Then joint pain can also happen and then obviously these joints will pain and this pain is often felt in the same joint on the both side of the body. Then obviously the joints will pain and often this pain is felt on the same joint in both sides of the body and obvious. So the joints will be swollen, painful, tender and stiff, right? They will have fatigue also, joints will have fatigue. Over time and, and over time you may even lose the range of motion range of motion meaning the joint which is contracting properly might just be stuck at a particular range. So this is also a complication and you might even have deformity. The joint may get deformed. So you have to look for all these symptoms. But yeah, this deformity and but yes, this deformity and loss of range of motion happens in the later stages because of the stiffness of the joint capsules, joint coverings. So you have to understand why this happened. If you wear a small ring inside a finger, you can easily move the finger. But, but if this ring was longer than the joint, if it was this long, then the movement will be restricted. If you wear a ring in a joint, what will happen? This joint is quite mobile, but if the same ring was long enough to actually cover the joint tightly, then the joint becomes stiff and you will won't be able to move the joint much. So that's the same thing which is happening in rheumatoid arthritis. The joint and the surrounding synovial membrane, the fluid filled cavity membrane which is there in around the joint becomes stiff and stiff and stiff and it actually contracts the joint so you won't be able to move the joint. Hope you're getting that. So this is the reason why slowly your joints become deformed and they lose their range of motion. Now, like I said, this disease can involve other things also in the body, less like joints, they can attack other organs as well. So if your lungs are involved, they attack your lungs, you can have chest pain, which is typically when taking a deep breath. Because when you take a breath, your chest bones, they have to move, they have to expand. And if your chest bones are involved, if your pleura, lung pleura, lung covering is involved because of the inflammation, then you can have chest pain when you breathe. If your eyes are involved, then you might have eye burning. You can have itching and discharge from the eyes. If you have Jorgen syndrome, which is commonly found with this disease, 
you might have dry eyes and dry mouth also then nodules can form under the skin and these nodules are often a sign of a more severe disease apart from all these things you can have sleep difficulties you can have numbness and tingling numbness and burning in your hands and feet this can happen so all these are the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis now let's look at how we diagnose see there is no test that can actually determine for sure whether you have rheumatoid arthritis or not there is no test for surety however most people with rheumatoid arthritis have an abnormal test results what that means even if you have rheumatoid arthritis there is a chance that your test can come back normal but yes most people with rheumatoid arthritis will have abnormal results so there are two basic tests two lab tests that are positive in most people and are often helpful in making the diagnosis these are first is the rheumatoid factor and another one is anti ccp antibodies so rheumatoid factor is tested anti ccp antibody is tested if these two are positive then definitely you have rheumatoid arthritis and you have typical joint symptoms then you have rheumatoid arthritis then the diagnosis is made and you are started on the treatment a few other tests are also done like complete blood count c reactive proteins esr joint x rays and sometimes fluid analysis of the joint can also be done so these are the tests which are usually done you might be asked to do further tests if your doctor thinks it's something else then let's come on to the treatment rheumatoid arthritis is most oftenly rheumatoid arthritis most often requires a long term treatment and a lot of lifestyle changes you need to understand the treatment can include a lot of things it can include medicines physical therapy exercises sometimes surgeries and the most important fifth thing is education 